It's always busy, to be fair, and, and really this time you hope it's going to be a little bit easier where all your hard work's already been done, if you like, and you're just crossing the T's and dotting the I's. But, uh, but yeah, it really is busy, and, um, and we, we, we need to do a little bit in this window if we can as well. OK, what do you need to do? I know Gary last week was talking about possible evolution of the squad here and now. Um, yeah. What kind of positions is he is he telling you he needs to go well, and change? The, the relevant, I mean, it's relevant that Ishmael Miller's gone back, so there's an area there, you know, we, you know there's a possibility that we, we he may come back again. Um, but that's an area that of, of concern for us that, that we're looking at. And anything that really jumps out at us, really, that can improve our team, you know, then then we're interested. But but primarily at the moment, you know, the fact that we've lost Ismail probably means that that that's an area that's top priority. Is are the talks ongoing with Forrest about him coming back? Um, yes, yes, they are. They are. Um, it, it's up in the air, and I would say there was it was. 60-40 against at the moment, but hopefully we can improve on that percentage as, as days go on. Yeah, did he enjoy his time with you? Because, I mean, it was a great signing when you got him and, and he justified the, the kind of outlay of cash because he, he, he did the business, didn't he? Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at our little change of form where we, the first four games he was involved in two draws and two wins and he scored goals and uh, it was that presence that we needed and, you know, we've done great to get him. You know, I know quite a few agents and all that now and I, I hope, you know, we've got to get in really quick at Yeovil, otherwise we don't we don't get him. So it's a quick smash and grab, get hold of him, get him in, and then hope that we can keep other people away from then trying to nick him off us, you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. How does your system work? Talk me through your scouting system at Yeovil. Well, that's me. <laughs> so it's, 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 I'll go to about five or six games a week, probably. Um, I'll get, on, get in touch with uh, Gary after every game. Sometimes we even manage to get someone sorted before that game's even ended. Um, it's great having that, just, just no, no lines of bureaucracy to get through, just a phone call straight to the gaffer, and, um, and we can make quick decisions. And, and like I say, that's really how, how Yeovil have got to work. But I watch all the under-21 stuff. It's really important for our loans that we do well with them. Um, you know, with our budget not being the one of the biggest, then, then we've got to really work that loan system well. And uh, I think it's come up well, for, especially last year, of all the success, taking chances on people like Danny Byrne, who who come through well. And obviously, uh, what I'm saying about the Ishmael Millers, you know, Birmingham have nicked him, although I think he's gone back to Fulham now. But them sort of players, uh, we're pleased with like the Webbies that we, you know, Webby couldn't get in at Northampton when we first took him. And, um, and now he's, you know, I would imagine there's a lot of interest from a lot of people looking at at Webster at the moment and of course non-league watch that as well with uh, Foley at Newport that was another another one we were pleased with last season uh, uh, Stecky um, Paddy Madden of course we all, we all know about him so so the system works really easy for us because like I say no lines of bureaucracy meet a Gary and uh, and then we make decisions quickly he, he likes to have them in front of him have a quick chat with them uh, that's quite a, a test for them to pass that one as well but it, it, it's uh, we have to be in quick, so that's why that system works for us, and um, you know it, it's brought success. That's an interesting insight. But I guess you and Gary, you must have loads of contacts just dotted around the country who may just make you that all-important phone call to tell you about player A, Adam Morgan at oh, Liverpool, uh, Lundstrom at Everton, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. The phones, you know, not. I've got about 500 agents in my phone, and literally, I've had to turn it off for this call. And I, I, I no doubt that there's going to be four missed calls on there, and and they're all players. But there's a lot, you know, they give you a lot of rubbish. A lot of them. I mean, there's some good ones that throw them up, but but you've got to get rid of a lot of the uh, a lot of the ones that aren't good enough, and then just work out that one that's that's genuinely going to be good for you. We can't really afford mistakes, so so we really have to do our due diligence on it. Yeah, no, it's interesting with the, with the agents ones because um, I remember I was assistant manager with Ian Holloway for, for one season and we got agents on the phone every day. You yeah. probably get multiples on that, on that yeah, now in terms yeah. of, but you're always frightened of saying no to the one that may make it somewhere else. Well, no, the funny thing is I do say to Gary, look, all, all, all the yeses are going to be right. Some of the noes may prob possibly have been a yes 
but we're not going to take the chance on them ones. So we just go with the ones that we think are going to be right and don't take a gamble on, on the others, you know, especially if they're expensive. Obviously, we've brought some young lads in, like your, your Hoskins from Southampton uh, as a 18, 19 year old that's been released. They're, they're not getting, you're just hoping that that their potential reaches where you want it, that you know where where it should go eventually, and and we've done all right with some of the youngsters. Uh, you know, Lundstrom's come in; he's looking decent. Joe Rawls has done well; he's looking decent, and. Um so, it, you know, it's, it's all looking good. And I think the big thing for us, I think it'd be a bigger achievement staying in this mm. in this league than maybe the, 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 what promotion was. And uh, But we're pretty confident that, that we're going to we're gonna make that happen, you know. OK, tell me about this. He sounds like a film star to be Matteo Lanzoni. Yeah, you Matteo. Nicked, yeah. You've nicked him from, uh, from Oldham, haven't you, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, family wars over this, won't they? Yeah, no, not really. Listen, he was going, he was doing a medical in London at the time, so Oldham had already lost him. So uh, so then we nicked him from this place in London where he was going. That's what we've done. So Lee can't have a go at us. <laughs> where was he headed? He was headed to, uh, I'm not sure I should really say where go he was on, going. Be brave. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Another league club, was it? Yeah, yeah, no, well, all right then. Well, he was going down to Crawley, as you forced me arm, and it's my first time on radio. If I make mistakes, I'll, I'll let him slap me wrist. No, that's good information to have. That's, mm. That just goes to show how competitive, and until a player actually signs on the proverbial dotted line, he, he, he can be sought elsewhere. I yeah. mean, you understand the guy. Who would want to go and play for Crawley anyway when you can go and play in a championship especially? Well, that's, you, you said to him exactly what I said to him, so um, you're right, so... You know, I think I think what it was, uh, he was. Um, he, he, I think he was almost feeling committed to the other club, and and I think we just wet his appetite enough for him to change his mind. Okay, um, for Yeovil fans listening, and there'll be lots of them listening now on the way to Hewish Park. Yeah. is there going to be a big change in the squad over the next few weeks? No, not in the next few weeks. There'll be maybe one or two changes, and then what we'll do then, obviously, the big change would be at the end of the year, whatever whatever league we're in hopefully it's a championship and that's when you get your little you know we've got a few lads obviously uh that are contracts need to be signed for them and and whatever but normally that's the big change there'll be 10 out and 10 in 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 the summer is normally what sort of happens but but not too much change here if we get ishmael back which we hope for then then i think we've got enough nearly enough to, to get ourselves safe in this league and, and get mid-table-ish. That sounds like the big priority right now, getting the big man back. Yeah, well, that big man, if not that big man, then maybe another big man, but um, my list is getting smaller and smaller on, on that type. Yeah. They're a dying breed, to be fair. No, they are. You're right. Um, where do you keep all your information? Do you have it on a laptop, or is it all in a book, or do you have it between the ears? How does it work? It's all in nut. Yeah, it's all in my head. <laughs> it's all in my head. <laughs> and the relationship with you and Gary, I mean... Um, who, who's the elder? Who's the big brother? Well, they all say that. That must be because I look older than him. He, <laughs> he, uh, he holds all the cups up. I do all the hard work. That's why I look older. But uh, he, I, he's five years older than me. Uh, he's mum's favourite. So uh, there you go. Now you know the family story. So how does it work then um, on match days and at the ground you call him Gaffer and at home you call him Gary or bro? How does it no, work? No, he's, he's always, he's always <laughs> gal when he's in front of me. And then uh, if too many people are around, I'll call him the Gaffer, but I'm laughing when I'm saying it, really. Yeah, no, you, you've <laughs> referred to him a few ways on, on this chat, which, which is, oh, which right. is, oh, which right. is absolutely uh, f- fantastic. I broke his heart once. He was convinced that I was older than him, but um, I had to get out one of the the, rec- the football books to show him his date of birth tells <laughs> us otherwise. He wasn't very, he wasn't best pleased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, um, you're watching them obviously at home today. Yeah, uh, how often going. do you watch Yeovil play? Because obviously you're saying you watch five or six games yeah. a week. That means you're elsewhere. How often do you see the first team play? Well, I see them quite a lot, actually, because nowadays there's games, you know, all through the week, Sundays, mm. Fridays, Thursdays, every, every day. So I make a point of watching us at least once a month, at least. Yeah. And that's so vital because you could be watching a, a little winger all week and then you go and look at your own and think, hang on, he's no better now. So it just keeps that control method in you know, in your sight, you know, so it's really important that is, I think. You must have an inor- you must have a love for the game of football to go and watch five or six games on a cold, it sounds glamorous, yeah, but to go to yeah. some of these venues on a Tuesday yeah, night, I Thursday know. night, I Thursday know. afternoon, pouring with rain, I very know. cold. I know, but I tell you what, it warms you up when you see a real good one and you yeah. know you're the only one. That, I know that I've got to make that phone call to Gal really quickly. And then, you know, I'll be talking to his agent, his mum, his granny within an hour. Do you know what I mean? I'll really get into it and uh, and make sure that, 
there's only us he wants to come to if we can do that, you know what I mean? So, so I enjoy that part of it. It's great to see a good one. Yeah, yeah, and, and Wembley w- was fantastic for yeah, everyone connected yeah. with Yeovil. I mean, us as broadcasters were there and felt immensely proud. It yeah. must have been a great day for you as well for, uh, for those reasons. Just to sit back and realise where you see people like... I saw Webster in, in Czechoslovakia about five years ago. Doncaster ended up nicking him. This is when I was at Bristol City, I think. And uh, he was at Donny. Then he weren't getting in there, so we took him to Northampton. We left Northampton, and then he couldn't get in there. But I knew that he had plenty about, about him, and there was improvement to be had in him. And uh, to see him come through what he has and then be a star, you know, and, and I think he'd be a star of the future, is fantastic, you know. Uh, Pete, great, keep up the great work. It's a fascinating insight. Uh, thanks for chatting with me. Enjoy thanks the game this lot, afternoon. Jeff. Yeah, good luck. Happy New Year. And the very same to you. Cheers. Catch you, you soon. Take Bye-bye. care. Pete Johnson, live from Hewish Park.